Hello guys, welcome back to Tax Riders. In this episode, we will have a very general introduction to parallel computing. So let's go for it. So parallel computing. I said it, it will be a very general introduction because uh, we will have dedicated series on this. This is actually one of my favorite topics to talk about. And as a result, we will have, you know, elaborated videos on high performance computing and parallel computing. But because, yeah, we have talked about different aspects of scientific computing in Python. And later on, we want to go for numerical computations to solve partial differential equations. This is, this can be really beneficial to, if we have a general introduction to that. So at least you can see that, okay, what parallel computing is all about. And this will be very cool. So I will cover a couple of, you know, techniques that you can employ to for parallelization in Python, but there are much more and, you know, everyday people, you know, are releasing new techniques or libraries to, to, to improve the performance of applications. So in Python, one of the most basic forms to, to do parallel computing is by taking advantage of multi-processing uh, package, let's say, that what it does is actually helps you to, to run parallel processes. So parallel computing is nothing but uh, running things in parallel. So instead of solving one big problem, you can break it down into smaller pieces and then solve them in, in parallel. And in this case, you can decrease the runtime dramatically. So multiprocessing is, a, you know, a basic uh, package to parallelize tasks to run multiple processes at the same time. And as you can see that here, it's, uh, for example, a test case that you say that, okay, start a pool, a pair of pool with four processes and then you can say that okay with this pool map this task that is just nothing but uh, uh, does nothing but printing the PID the process ID that you can get with this OS package and also the argument that is passed to it so we start the task in a pair output with four processors and then we pass it with this with the, 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 the list to it we pass the li this list to it. So this is actually the output. You can see that, okay, it starts to run. And then what what matters a lot in prior processing is that there is no guarantee that, okay, which task finished first. So this is one of the complexity in this regard. And you can see that in this case, this is just first task finished yet, finished first, and then a fourth task, and then a second task, and then a third task. And then, a, you know, when one task finishes, for example, here, the first task, then in the, the first task, then it assigns another task to it. So we have four processors, and they start to, you know, to cover all the array for us. This is the way that it works in parallel processing, most of the parallel processing uh, paradigms, let's say. And uh, yeah, this is uh, the way that uh, multiprocessing works. This is very similar to the way that you can parallelize MATLAB codes, because in MATLAB you have also parallel pool, parallel pool that is, uh, you know, you can configure it and then uh, is available to you to, to run parallel processes. The next technique that is this, uh, discussed here is IPython Parallel. IPython is, uh, you know, the, the, the engine behind this Jupyter Notebooks and it has, it has also other tools. And one of the tools is actually IPy uh, Cluster, which is very similar to the, to the you know, uh, uh, thread pool or parallel pool that we discussed before. But uh, we don't want to go for this. Uh, because it doesn't have lots of uh, applications in the future. We want to use parallel processing to speed off numerical computing processes. This doesn't have real applications for us because we don't want to use Python for this. And also we don't want to use Jupyter Notebooks uh, for this end. But uh, 
if you like, if you want to go for it, if you want to use it someday or in a project, you can go through this and then read it. It's quite clear that how you can use it because this is very, very similar. And the application and the example that is provided in this notebook is related to a process. It is a dummy task that has, you know, a sort of random delay that is that has a dummy delay a dummy, let's say a fake delay to, to mimic that it's a, you know, computationally intensive process. And then these delays are provided with a, with, with, as a random number to, to this task. And then different performance tests are uh, uh, evaluated to see that how you can visualize this kind of parallel processes performance. But as I said, I don't want to go for this because it doesn't have applications. I, I want to go for more interesting topics on this, which is actually MPI, Message Passing Interface. This is, you know, one of the oldest techniques in this regard. And this is something people are uh, have, been have been using for, I think, three decades. And it's still... And it is still the standard for parallel computing. And there are lots of applications of that. What it does is, you know, it can be used for distributed computing. All the things that we discussed, including multiprocessors, a multiprocessing package, and IPython cluster. It, they are for shared memory system, like for CPU. That the CPU that you have in your laptop or local machine, it has different cores. And they access the same memory. That's why it says... They, they call it shared memory systems because all the parallel processes have access to to the same memory. But assume that if you want to parallelize, you want to you know make a network of eight computers, of thousands of computers or whatsoever, that they have their own CPU and their own memory and their own storage. So in this regard, it will it is called distributed memory because each processor has its own memory. It's better to call them node. And MPI is a standard, is a you know paradigm, a protocol for communication between these nodes. So the way that you can distribute the tasks into into these parallel nodes is very important. It becomes complicated, but with MPI, when it when we say message passing it, because the the messages that this you know these nodes will start to to send to each other, and they have to receive it, and the, the, in this way you you can parallelize your simulations. So what should be really uh, noted here, should be pointed out, is all the nodes will run the same code. And the only way that you can understand or can detect that which node it is, is by asking the MPI protocol, MPI interface, that okay, what node is this? And MPI tells you, and then you can do your own operations based on a node. So for example, if you want to solve a numerical computation, we will discuss it. If you want to solve a numerical simulation using MPI, then all the nodes will see the same mesh, but they know that on which part of the mesh they should work. So in this way, for example, to, to parallelize it to four nodes, you can divide the mesh, you can divide your domain of interest, your computational domain into four zones and then assign the number of zone to each node and then they start to work while the code are the same. The codes are all the same in, in, in these nodes. So the way that you can start uh, using MPI is, uh, you know, installing an MPI implementation uh, into on, on your local machine. And with this command MPI run n with n number of uh, processors is the way that you can call MPI commands, uh, MPI programs. And after this, you can, for example, say MPI run n4 Python something. It means that use four process, four processor or four nodes for, for this computation using Python. And this is for, uh, you know, an example on this that you can see uh, that, uh, okay, it's, it, it I said, I don't want to go to the details, but we have a, uh, you know, MPI uh, communication world that is actually all the nodes that we have. And then you can rank. Rank is actually the node ID. So in this case, you see that, okay, it says if it is rank zero, so they were, for example, when we run it with two processes, one is zero and one is one. And when... Um, it says that if it is zero, then the data is this. And using this communication word, this communicator word, send the data to the destination of one. So send it to the node number one. And then if its rank is one, 
it waits for the data and receives the data from the process number zero. So this is the way that this mapping, this message passing uh, mechanism works. It is quite easy, you know, in principle it's quite easy, but in application it may become complicated because you pay, you should pay attention to lots of aspects. And this is actually what we will discuss in a dedicated series. And in this example, it is, uh, you know, the same, but we want to pass a, a NumPy array to the other processor, to the other process. And this is actually matrix vector multi multiplication. So if you study this and you understand this, then you can say that, yeah, I, I have understand uh, the, the parallel processing because matrix, uh, the matrix uh, multiplication is nothing by, uh, but um, multiplying all the rows to the columns. And you can see that if you have a matrix, then you can easily parallelize it. You can say that the top half, I assign it to one process and the lower half, I assign it to, to, to the other. Or if you have four, you can easily divide it into four sections, four parts. And then each process will just, uh, you know, perform the operation on the, on the assigned section. And by doing that, you can parallelize it. And then in the end, you gather everything together. This is actually what it, what it, uh, what here is, uh, you know, this, uh, this function does. So we say that all together, all the parts that are automatically, you know, that are separately performed by each process, you gather them all. And then in the end, you have the compiled matrix, the gathered matrix, matrix, let's say. And in order to parallelize it, you can see that you define the number of nodes you have, get size. It's, it tells you that this process is being run by four processes. This, uh, I mean, the parallelization is being uh, carried out by four processes. And then you can define the start and end of, of the sections that I told you and perform the operation just on the section that is assigned to you. This is actually the way that MPI works. This is quite cool if you start to, to, to work with this. And MATLAB with this MPA for Pi provides a very nice interface to start with because uh, otherwise you need to work with C and C++ data structures, which would become a bit complicated. But this is quite simple to work with. And for some of elements in a vector, you can just imagine the same technique that you, you have a vector, you want to calculate a sum, but you divide it into sections to different regions, sub-regions, sub-parts or partitions, let's say, and each process will start to calcul calculate the sum and, and its assigned zone, and then they can all be, to, all be you know, using the ter terminology of MPI, be reduced back to the process number zero somehow. So this is actually what this code does. So you can see that it, again, it it gets a size and it calculates. You see, it calculates the you know the subregions, the the whole length of A, the matrix, the vector divided by size, and then perform the summation there, and then reduce them all together. This is a sort of you know adding all them together, and then you can have the the final uh, the 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 accumulated value of this. So there are lots of examples for MPI for Pi, and then you can read these, read those things, and then you you can uh, uh, know much more about this. But this is actually the principle. And the next thing to discuss is OpenMP. OpenMP is also quite popular, and it's more intended to be used for shared memory systems. So uh, what OpenMP does is a sort of automatic parallelization for shared memory system in a way that you write a function and then OpenMP tries to parallelize it for you. So very similar to multiprocessing package, but has lots, lots of more advanced features. But uh, it, it is not very simple to use OpenMP in Python because there is something called GIL or global uh, interpreter uh, lock Yeah, here that locks the, 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 the parent process. So it's, it's not possible to create more processes inside uh, the parent process. And in order to use OpenMP, you, we need to release GIL and then start to use OpenMP features. So this is what, what, we, what we do here. So you can see some examples here that are uh, actually uh, being carried out by Cyton, which is actually a compiled version of Python codes that has a sort of, you know, C integration that has lots of more uh, performance uh, improvements in comparison to raw Python codes. And this is actually how NumPy works. That, uh, th that's why NumPy is much faster than 
the algorithm that you implement yourself. And this is how it works, that you release the GIL and then you parallelize the process. In this way, it is just printing the number of, uh, of the thread. And uh, you can use the same principle that we had uh, discussed for MPI, for OpenMP, but as I said, it is much simpler. So in this case, in this example, uh, the developer has implemented a simple uh, matrix vector multiplication. This is a uh, you know, cytone implementation. It's not parallelized. And then it says that it is only two microsecond per loop. Uh, this is for NumPy implementation, and this is for, for the implementation that you saw using Cytone, so five microseconds per, uh, per loop. And then it starts to parallelize it using the technique that we discussed, using uh, OpenMP. So these are actually function decorators in Python. We didn't discuss this. This is relatively an advanced topic. But this is the way that you can parallelize it automatically using uh, OpenMP. So you see that, yeah, uh, we release GIL and then in a parallel loop, very similar to par force in uh, MATLAB, you do the same, uh, you do the, 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 the matrix um, vector multiplication and then you gather all the information. So this is actually what OpenMP does. You don't need to gather information manually. It is automatically handled by OpenMP in a shared memory system. And then it gives you that, the, okay, with, with this OpenMP implementation, we have around 200 microseconds, so much slower than the previous implementation. And that's, you know, a very interesting thing to discuss here that is actually discussed that, uh, you know, the problem size matters a lot. If you have a small problem then we and you parallelize it, then there are lots of overheads for communication. That's also the same for MPI that there are lots of overhead because you need to send these messages to all processes on an open MP. It needs to gather the data automatically and lots of issues. So the problem size should be selected carefully. And then you, you need to know that, okay, do I need parallelization for this or not? And this is an, uh, an, a demonstration of that, that, uh, we, that the, the problem size is changed. Uh, in multiple steps using this you know, this, this step from 25 to two, 200 and then it the performance is measured and this plot is uh, actually derived that you can see that okay for the matrix size uh, for, for according to matrix size you can see that numpy is cypon uh, implementation is always faster always sorry so always slower than the numpy so the higher it is, the slower it is. So because it is a, a actually uh, the duration that it takes to perform the operation. And it's, and the OpenMP implementation is much slower in small metric sizes. And when you increase the metric size, you can see that it comes below the other implementation. So in big matrices, it is very fast because then you the overhead cost is is can be ignored in in uh, in comparison to the time that you have saved for parallelization using parallelization actually. So this is actually how OpenMP works in action, and there is also a discussion here on OpenCL, which is similar to OpenMP, but uh, for GPU computing. I, I don't want to go for this. This is very advanced topic because you need to develop kernels that can be run in in CPU and a CPU uh, you know programming sorry, on GPU, and GPU programming is very different from CPU, so I don't want to go to the details, but I can tell you that there are lots of uh, GPU programming libraries being released every year. So, for example, one of the recent ones is called OpenACC, which is quite simple to work with. Uh, that is very similar to OpenMP, does lots of op automatic operations for you. But yeah, this is actually something that you may be interested to, to have a look at, to take a look at actually. And then, uh, yeah, this is the code that, uh, the, for the binding with PyOpenCL for uh, GPU computing in Python. But as I said, this is actually a very, very general introduction. I didn't want to go, want to go to, to the details, but uh, yeah. We will discuss more on this in the future when we start to perform, to, to use this in, in real world projects. I hope you enjoyed it. This is actually a, a long uh, introduction, but uh, was a very general one. I didn't go to the details, but I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to check out the, the, the topics that uh, you are interested in. 
and have fun. See you next videos. Bye.